Hi there, Mr. Automation with a short video today on how I create GitLab projects automatically. I create a lot of source code and um, um, I store them in, uh, in GitLab, but I don't like to uh, use the graphical user interface that comes with GitLab. It costs me a lot of time to create this project with all the branches and files inside of it. And uh, uh, yeah, if you can automate it, why not? So this video is about how you automate uh, a GitLab project creation mm, agenda. I don't know if it's really an agenda, it's sort of a list of the stuff uh, that is involved, so to speak. It's a lot of doing and explaining. Uh, so GitLab auto create project. There are some SSH keys for accessing GitLab. I'll show that in a second. Uh, that's Jenkins, by the way. Uh, so here, uh, so you have GitLab. And if you, if you are logged in to GitLab, or you have another user, of course, doesn't matter, a service account or something like that. You have SSH keys. And I have here, for instance, this Mark GitLab SSH key. And that SSH key, the private key of that, I have that loaded here in Pageant. Okay. Yes, and that GitLab key, uh, I have that loaded in the Putty pageant here with the password on it, uh, so it's that has a key phrase, the key. And then I can use that key inside of my uh, Visual Studio, as you see here. I have some Visual Studio, and I can, I can do a Git status, for instance. There's nothing to commit here, but it doesn't matter. Uh, um, I'll show you how that works as well. Because that's quite important. So let me go to my PC here. I'll show you what is needed. And uh, then, oh, of course, Microsoft changed all that stuff again. Now you need to go to advanced settings. Ah, oh, these guys are retarded with Microsoft. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, and then we have here, yes, environment variables. And then you have a git ssh variable. And I have that variable pointing to plink.exe. And that's part of Putty. So uh, Pageant is also part of Putty. And uh, you can download Putty from the internet. And if you install that, you get plink. And then you need to create this variable. Uh, and that way I have the integration inside of my visual code. So I can uh, communicate with the GitLab server based on an SSH key. Okay, that's it for now. Um, so SSH keys for accessing GitLab. Um, I have a Windows system configured for Git integration, as you can clearly see. I work on a Windows machine. Uh, it's fully automated, the project creation, so it's instant ready for use when I uh, run the script. Uh, it's PowerShell instead of clicking the UI. Already explained that. Uh, the Git project we're creating here is actually a Jenkins pi declarative pipeline, so fully in source code, so nothing on the disk, so to speak, local disk. And we're going to import that uh, pipeline as well in Jenkins, and we will do a uh, short demo with the pipeline, and we run the pipeline, and that's it. Uh, perhaps something pops up, I don't know. Perhaps I get an ID, I will see. Um, so let, let's go to the code, right? So we have some code here, and again, I'll size this up, I'll close this one. This time it's a Git project for a, a pipeline. I have a namespace, Jenkins Pipelines, I'll show that. So I have a group here, Jenkins Pipelines, and I have some pipelines here. And whenever I create Jenkins Pipeline, I put it under there. This is the name of my GitLab server I'm using, I just showed you that right here. This is my GitLab server. And um, yeah, so this is some input, um, and one of them is mandatory, so that's the project name, you know, the project you want to create, it needs to be unique, of course, and apart from that, I made them all false, so for me, they are not non-mandatory. I keep in mind that if you run the script, this folder must exist, of course. This namespace must exist in your GitLab server, and this must be a valid GitLab server. Okay. So then we go to line nine of the code, we change the directory to this, to the local project there, as you can see. If that fails, we stop, So well, because the folder doesn't exist, so basically we cannot create a project, okay? And then from that, we basically run some git commands to create the git project and put it inside of uh, GitLab. 
and I'll go to my Jenkins pipelines here. I will refresh the page here, as you can see, I have a server deployment, server decommissioner. Apart from that, I have no pipelines. So I will put the, the debugger is already on line 20, but I put it in the sort of the first line here when we're actually doing something with the project. So let's run the script. It asks me for input for a project name. Uh, let's give it a very good name, Mark01. It's not a very good name, of course, but for the demo it's fine. Um, project name, Mark. Okay, so basically what we do now, we change the directory. Uh, not yet. First we uh, init an empty project. So inside of our git directory here, dgit, we now also have... Uh, a mark one, right? A folder. And what we do here on line 18 is actually change to that directory. So keep in mind, keep uh, keep a look on this uh, command prompt. You watch that. And now you see that we are inside of mark01. That's the project we created. What we then do is create a readme.md. It's sort of a default for a Git project. Uh, I just left it inside of there. So it's there for now. I create the Jenkins file. That's an empty file with nothing in it yet. I will create a directory called scripts and configs. I use that often uh, when I run uh, pipelines, so I have some. Uh, I can put my scripts inside of a folder. I like that. Then I run F10 again. And basically, what we do here is a sort of a hair string. I gave a video what the hair string is already, but the hair string is sort of this is the template for a Jenkins pipeline. So this is basically a syntax of a very simple pipeline. It's a pipeline that runs one stage and it does an echo. It's not more than that, but at least we have something there. So we press F10 again, so that's the string, and what we do then is basically that whole string, we pipe that to the Jenkins file, so we put some content in there. Uh, keep in mind that we do encoding ASCII, because uh, I did it with UTF-8, and Jenkins sometimes, uh, or very often, uh, gives an error there, I don't know why, so I put it on ASCII there, so it's quite important, I think, even. Um, so I do git add star, basically git command to add everything, and do a status and do auto commit. Then I do a, a branch creation of test, a branch creation of production. And then I check out the test branch. I delete the master branch. Not best practices, but in my uh, environment, I always delete the master branch. Don't ask me why, I just do it. Then we set the protocol here. And then we add some remoting stuff there. And then we push the content basically back to Git now. Right? So, and if we now go back to my Git project here, and I refresh the Jenkins pipeline. We now have a mark on one, so that's a pipeline, with the Jenkins file inside of it, with a couple of branches, as you can see, acceptance, production, and test, but no master, because we deleted that. And inside of this Jenkins file, we now have a very simple pipeline for Jenkins. What we basically can do is go to this project, copy this link over, go to your uh, Jenkins environment, go to administration, a uh, new item, uh, give it, I will call it Mark01, and it will be a multi branch pipeline. Okay. And uh, I call it Mark01 again, that's the description name. And here I do add source, that will be Git, right? I have some credentials inside of Jenkins so I can connect to the Git server again, of course, otherwise you cannot uh, do a Git clone to uh, get the content while running the pipeline. Uh, discover branches, I leave the default, I don't think, by Jenkins file exactly, we have a Jenkins file there, I don't do any discard of old items, it's fine for now, and I'll save that. Now. Okay, so, there you see it already, so Jenkins file is found, and let's go to the Blue Ocean interface, because I like that more for running pipelines, I don't say, say this is bad by the way, uh, because this is also quite good, you can also uh, run it from here, build now, but it's, uh, yeah, no, it, it works, so I, I cannot really complain, but I just like the Blue Ocean interface a little bit more. And if you then go to Mark here, you see test production acceptances, and then you have a play button here. So for instance, if we play this test branch, we can now look at this test branch, stage one, print a message, stage one. And that's, of course, exactly what we created here. Jenkins file with some stages inside of it, Echo stage one, 
and let's go text this is the test branch so for instance if we now go to production branch uh, perhaps that's funny and then we do stage uh, we call it PRD right I commit that if you now go back to Jenkins and we go to mark we go to branches and we run the production branch this time and we'll open that guy up here then we'll see that we have different that comes because this is a different branch so we can play around with that a little bit um let me go back to the demo because i promised a short demo so it should be one so we created the pipeline we imported the pipeline it does not do much to be fair the pipeline but that's uh, not in the scope of this video because i'm going to create some videos about some mm, more complicated pipelines and how you perhaps can uh, translate a script to and put it inside of Jenkins with some input you know and you can basically uh, use Jenkins as an orchestration layer on top and then feed all those arguments to your script for instance I will give some videos on that for sure in a short time um, so let me see we run the pipeline it does nothing we give a demo let me see if I can make a small extension yeah I think for the sake of the demo it would be nice to actually go to that newly created uh, pipeline here so I will open the explorer there and I will copy this part over I'll open a new window here so a new uh, and I will open a directory there so this is our new uh, I'll open a terminal here I'll show you how I work as well a little bit. So imagine we want to add the stage, right? I don't want to do that in the GitLab UI. I always work with, work with Visual Studio. So I add the stage to, stage to, stage to. Nothing exciting here. So we can do a git status now, status. And you can do a git uh, commit minus A minus M. My keyboard is not willing to work with me. Uh, adding stage, git push. Just see what happens. So you see now, now I'm pushing from my Visual Studio back to that newly created project that we have here. And if you look inside of the test branch, you only see stage one. And if you look here, I just pushed a new commit here, right? To test. And if I refresh here, you will see that it is here now as well, the second stage. And if we now go back to Jenkins and we go to here and we run our test branch again, we run that again by pressing the play button. We should see two stages now. No, we have that now. Stage one, stage two. Um, um, yeah, one more important thing to note when you run a pipeline, you see the commit message here. You see that production test, and you see this commit message D, uh, D5 in the end. If you go to my, you will see that that's exactly, uh, no, I must do it fair. You see, that's exactly the commit I did. You see that? The D5 in the end. So that corresponds to this, what you see there. It's quite important. Sometimes you commit something and you think it just didn't run. You can see it here, basically on the commit, which uh, version of the pipeline uh, or of, of the source code uh, run. Um, let me think. Yeah, I think that was enough. Uh, I just promised to show you how I automatically create a GitLab project and um, um, it's not enough. Let's do one more without debugging. Just we cre create a, a Mark II project. So you see the whole and how fast it is as well. So I go to GitLab again here, I go to Jenkins pipeline. So Mark II doesn't exist now. You see that very clearly. So when I now run the script and I call it Mark II, just let's see how fast that all goes. And if you press F5, we now have Mark II. A brand new project with branches and everything and files and imagine the power behind it this is just a very simple script i created this for demo purposes and some small files but then imagine you could set up a whole structure you know default structure for your git project with with the branches and everything inside of that and then automatically create that um yeah that was it uh thanks for watching and i hope to see you again bye bye